Hi guys, welcome back to Z's Corner. This is Sal. As you can see from the screen right now, today is Chinese New Year's. So I wanted to take a moment to wish everybody a very happy, prosperous, and healthy start to the Year of the Tiger. So the topic of today's video is around station defense. And I thought it would be a great topic to talk about, especially since with the introduction of the last patch of the Amalgam, which is a brand new rating chip. And with that introduction, a lot of higher ops players are starting to raid again for resources. And, you know, if you're in that kind of, you know, 38, 39 to 42 range, what can you do to help, I guess, discourage um, some of these players with, with their bigger ships. You may not win every single fight, but you can at least deal enough damage to the point where that player could decide that raiding you isn't really worth the effort. So before we go into detail in today's video, I want to give a big shout out to Lusenki. Lusenki is a server 30 player, and a lot of this crews are actually his idea. And, you know, I, I talk to him quite a bit on Discord sometimes, and we've been bouncing ideas off of each other. And, you know, he's got a great, great kind of mind for station defense. And I kind of picked it so um, and used some of his ideas and combined them with some of my ideas for basically this video. So again, Lusenki, thank you so much for your contributions. So I'm going to lead off with a really crazy example that's on screen right now. You see a player, an Ops 43 player. Um, this was from a while ago, back before the G5 ships were out. But anyway, an Ops 43 player defeating... Uh, what at the time was one the the most powerful ship out there, a G4 Epic. Um, it's a tier 10 G4 Epic too, so it's a very high level ship. It's 38.5 million in power. It's got a decent crew uh, for the ship, um, and he's he defeated it with basically you know Fingras, Envoys, Fortunates, and another Envoy. And just this kind of layout is actually really really insane to me. Um, so, you know, what are the right crews to use to kind of defeat um, the G4 Epic or what's the right crew to use for general base defense? You know, we're going to jump right into that. So, you know, again, for the purpose of this video, we're going to make a few assumptions. I'm going to focus primarily on 39 to 42 players. So this means you hopefully you have a fifth dock, so five docks and five ships available. Um, we're going to talk about really the statement of intent, so what's your primary purpose uh, with when you're trying to defend your station. We're going to talk about understanding the ship hit orders. There's a very specific ship hit order out there um, that you really should understand before you try and crew to do the defense. Uh, we're going to go into some examples of crewing, and then we're going to jump into the game and we'll show a couple of examples of me hitting a volunteer <laughs> um, of, uh, and showing what, what the crews can do uh, to help defend, okay? So um, right off the bat, statement, statement of intent, the assumption, again, 39 to 42, five docks, assuming no G4 ships at all for defense. Um, you have to remember your primary damage dealers are always going to be your defense platforms. We're going to assume that, you, that your attacker is using a very powerful ship, so a G4 Epic Plus ship, so anything of G4 Epic or above grade. Um, and then, you know, you should look at your ships as being there not to really deal damage to these really powerful ships because they're really, really outclassed. But your ships are there to do a few things. One, to help strip shields. Two, help prevent critical hits. Three, reduce damage. And most importantly of all, they're buying time for your defense platforms to do their work. Okay, because defense platforms fire multiple times in a round and they deal a lot of damage. And, you know, before we jump into all this, I want to also say this is not a replacement for shielding. Don't don't try and do it because um, you you can still get broken into. Um, but it is uh, is something that's that's useful for being unshielded in territory. Let's say um, your alliance lost a territory recently and you kind of want to stay behind and make life difficult for the new owners of that territory. You can do this with, with this method. Um, and you can also use it for some raid defenses. So let's say you have one ship out there that you're going to try and use to intercept uh, and the, the enemy raiders uh, transports and then you know the rest of your ships are kind of out there sitting there in your station for your own defense because you've got a big whale out there that was trying to you know hit and teach you a lesson and all that stuff so um, you know that those are some of the useful uses that I can see for this type of base defense video 
All right, so this is the very most important part of the video, uh, understanding the ship hit order, because before you understand how to crew it, you have to understand how your ships are gonna get hit first. Um, I'm gonna spend some time to talk about this because it's, it's pretty complicated. Well, it's not really complicated, it's just kind of hard to explain <laughs> using words how it really does. So everything, first off, everything is gonna be from the perspective of the defender and not the attacker, so the defender. What happens first, is that all the ships that are against the triangle, so against the ship class that's attacking, are going to be hit first in ascending power by grade. And this means that the lowest power ships are hit first. And it's gonna be you know grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, uh, and then it's always lowest power ships being hit first in this type of order. Second, all of the neutral triangle ships are going to be hit again with the same ascending power by grade. Third, all the all the ships that are with or you know that are with the triangle are going to be hit with ascending power by grade. Fourth, all the survey ships are going to be hit with ascending power by grade. And then lastly, um, the last things that are hit are always going to be the defense platforms. And it's by A through F. So the defense platform A is always going to be hit first. And then B, C, D, E, and F um, eventually. So I hope that kind of made sense. Um, I know there's a lot of words and that's why we're going to jump into an example right now to kind of um, go through that. So let's say the attacking... Uh, is going to be me, I guess, Corvus, with a G5 Explorer. So the ship class is an Explorer. And then the Defender has the following ships with the following power in parentheses there. Um, there's a Saladin at 2.2 million. There's an Augur at 3.5 million. The D4 at 3.9 million. A Jellyfish at 4 million. And an Enterprise at 5 million. So given this type of layout, what do you think the ship hit order is going to be? I'll give you guys a second to kind of uh, work it out in your head, um, and then we'll kind of jump into it. Note that I made the defender ships um, ascending uh, by power, but it's not going to be hit in this type in, in in this way at all. So you have to refer back to what I said before, and I'll give you guys a minute to kind of figure out uh, what you think is the ship the ship hit order is going to be. All right, so I've given you some time, and here is really what happens. So the first ship hit is going to be the Saladin. Now, why is it the Saladin? Uh, it's because this is the ship, again, that's against the triangle. So I'm attacking, remember, with a Corvus as an explorer. So from a defender's perspective, what's against the triangle uh, for, a cor for an explorer? It's going to be an interceptor. And why is it the Saladin that's first? Because it's the lowest power interceptor out of the two that are available, okay? Um, so it's the Saladin first, and then it goes to the higher power interceptor that's available, which is the D4. So that's going to be the second ship that's hit. The third ship that's going to be hit is going to be the Enterprise. And you say, why the Enterprise and not the Jelly? Because remember uh, the clause of the by grade clause, okay, uh, when I said that. So the Enterprise, although it's at 5 million power, it's more powerful than the, than the Jellyfish. Remember, it's only a G3 ship, whereas Jellyfish is, or the ISS Jellyfish, is, is technically classified as a grade 4 ship. So the Enterprise will be hit first. And then after the Enterprise is done, it's going to be hitting the Jellyfish. And remember, these are all, all explorers. So this is what I meant in, the, in that first slide uh, around being neutral to the triangle. Okay, so explorer versus explorer is going to be neutral to the triangle. And then the last ship that's going to be hit that's there is the Augur. Why is that? Because that is against the triangle from the attacker's perspective so again explore what's against the triangle for an explorer it's going to be the auger so you know from a defensive perspective i guess that be would be with the with the triangle so with the triangle the the battleships directly counter the explorers so the auger is the last ship that's going to be hit so why is this so important it's important because the crewing really matters in terms of what you want the crews to be um to to kind of maximize um one how long you stay in the fight to how much damage you do to the attacker. And we'll look at that right now. So here's some example crewing 
based on the five ships that we had looked at before that are in dock. Uh, the first ship that's going to be hit needs to have uh, Pike, Maru, Morale, Maru, and Harrison uh, on, on the bridge. And this is because Harrison, so, uh, first off, only lasts for one round. But remember, his officer ability is really ignores shield. And, you, and with the Pike and Maru combination, basically you're at 100% shield ignore. So all the damage that you do, aside from the basic mitigation of the ship, of the attacking ship, is going to go straight to the hull. And this is kind of key because when Harrison procs, he actually works for all the defense platforms and all the other ships that are in dock as well. It's not just for the single ship that he's on. And this is key. So uh, this ship is basically a throwaway ship. It's going to die pretty quickly if you're, against, uh, you're fighting against a G4 Epic or a G5 type ship. So, you know, have Harrison proc. And even if he blows up with the first hit, um, his ability is still procking for the entire first round. The second ship that you want, you want Tilly Captain. So Tilly is that uncommon officer that they introduced back, um, I guess, a year ago. And with Tilly, we have full synergy here as well. Uh, but what Tilly is, is doing, and if you look at her Captain Billy, once she has full synergy, she does 30% shield burn. So she takes away 30% of the attacking ship's shields right off the bat. Um, and again, like Harrison, she only works for one round. So this is why she's in the second ship to be hit because she, I mean, this ship is going to probably get blown up pretty quickly as well. Um, so again, we have Tilly here and, you know, Saru and Michael Burnham are there in, su in supporting roles because one, Saru uh, reduces the attacker's damage. Burnham also burns shields, although only at a set amount based on your own uh, ship's, uh, you know, attack, officer attack value. So she helps a little bit. But, you know, mostly Saru and Michael Burnham are there for the, uh, the are there for the for the synergy to Tilly. So again, ship two is going to die pretty fast. Now, ship three, I've got Lorca here. Lorca with Captain Tilly, again, is more of mitigation, so classic type of mitigation. But in addition, it also does hull breach and as a reminder whenever you whenever the opponent ship is suffering from a hull breach they receive extra damage from critical hits as well so you know that's why we've got Lorca Tilly and HG Wharf in the picture here so you know Lorca for the hull breach uh, in addition Lorca's captain ability especially with synergy from Tilly and in addition to Tilly's you know officers ability are all mitigation type values so that kind of helps you survive just a teeny bit longer perhaps um, with them in that position now number four is yuki now yuki is like tilly except yuki works every single uh round so that's why she's in the fourth spot where she can keep working perhaps into rounds three or four or five uh, to continue to burn that shield off of the attacking ship and with this kind of setup you can probably burn the opponent's uh, you can re you can reduce the attacking ship's uh, shield to zero by at the latest let's say round three or four and that is key because once the shields are gone the attacking ship is going to suffer a lot of hull damage um, and notice uh, i have marcus on here uh, mainly because of the synergy the Yuki, an extra 5%, so she's doing 15%. Uh, I didn't go full synergy here because I wanted to have Vixis. Um, I spelled that wrong on the PowerPoint. Uh, there's no T in, in that officer's name. It's V-I-X-I-S. So Vixis here is good as well. And she does, she's like a Chen for uh, PvP. She does a flat percent, so negative 30% once she's maxed, negative 30% to the opponent's energy damage okay so um she's on here as well to kind of help reduce damage as opposed to an extra five percent from uh, of synergy for yuki um which wouldn't have mattered that much anyway um and then finally in the last ship uh, right that's gonna survive is a tos uhura uhura uh, uhura i can't pronounce that tos uhura um type uh, captain why for a critical hit reduction basically with TOS to us captain and TOS Kirk to proc morale and the synergy that goes along with that um you're reducing the attacking ship's critical hit chance to basically zero whenever they're proccing correctly and then we have a you know cross on here as well where whose officer ability is kind of to, to reduce the opponent's officer's stats which 
you know, in a roundabout way kind of helps lower overall damage and mitigation and all, and all that stuff. It, it may not be, you know, very significant, but, you know, it, it does help a little bit. Um, and that's kind of the rationale behind the crew ring. All right, so let's take a look in game now. And first off, thank you to Yoda for doing the testing with me. Um, I appreciate it. And I'm using my Corvus to do the hitting. And by the way, the corpse costs a lot to repair. So if you guys could give me some shout outs for that, I would appreciate it. Um, so this is kind of Yoda's default crew. As you can see, it's not it's not very bad at all. It's pretty it's a pretty good crew. Um, he's got uh, uh, he's got Lorca on captain, and then Yuki and Uhara. So I mean, in general, he's got uh, basically the right type of crew. The only issue is that uh, he since Yoda didn't know what the ship hit order was, it, it's kind of you know uh, in the wrong order. And as we kind of reviewed in the PowerPoint, the ordering is really really important. And also a quick note from my standpoint, you know, I've got uh, I've got five and seven on my Corvus because I found this type of mitigation curve to be better when I'm hitting uh, folks who are who have full docks. So if the docks are full, um, con basically only lasts two rounds, and I can't clear out all the docks in two rounds. Um, so the mitigation over time for me when I'm hitting someone with full docks is better with the five uh, and seven, and you know with with HG Wharf to kind of proc the critical hits. And, you know, as you can see, he's got, you know, five ships kind of uh, in station. And um, aside from Mitchell, I think Mitchell is probably someone you can kind of forget about in terms of the base defense. Everything else looks pretty, pretty good. Um, and you can see, you know, in this case, he did okay. But, um, you know, 22 million shield health left. I have a lot of my shields left. And he only did, uh, he only did about 6 million in hull damage. So, you know, with that, let's take a look real quick at the battle log. So here's the battle log. You can see everything is proccing right off the bat. Uh, unfortunately, he's got Harrison, so that's, a, that's really good as well. Um, and Lorca's proccing. And unfortunately, well, fortunately for him, TOS O'Hara procced here as well. So you can see when I'm doing uh, the damage, I'm hitting that Saladin, and I'm not doing critical hits. So um, it's right the first two hits. And he's got Sela as well. So Sela is, is great for PvP. It's another offset that decreases the crit, crit hit chance for every hit. And here you can see that the Saladin is destroyed in round one. So, you know, defense platforms are still doing significant damage to me. Here is round two. And unfortunately for him, in round two, uh, TOS Uhura does not proc, so you can see I'm doing critical hits. The D4 gets taken out with the first two hits, and then next is going to be the Enterprise. So the Enterprise, again, I'm hitting it, and the Enterprise is probably going to die uh, with my big guns firing. So we'll scroll down to that, and yeah, you see the Enterprise is dead right here with the big gun fires. So with... Out the Enterprise, he's kind of uh, in a pretty bad position because he doesn't have the OSR hard to prevent critical hits anymore. And as we look at round three, you can see I'm going to take out the Jellyfish pretty quick with my critical hits. So the Jellyfish is destroyed in round three. Now all that's left is going to be the Auger. And here the Auger is not going to last that long either because, again, I'm doing the critical hits. So two hits, uh, Shield Depleted on the Auger, and then, boom, the Auger is destroyed uh, in round, I think this is round four. So with it destroyed in round four, I'm hitting the defense platform A. The defense platform A is the one with the most uh, shield and hull. And after this, it's basically game over. So here's the second battle log that we've got up on, on uh, where I asked Yoda to kind of do the, the, the change the crews, basically. And you can see that he did a lot better. So all my shields are gone. Uh, my hull health is down to 23 million. So he did about 14 million in hull health. So that's over a third of uh, a third hull damage to me and you know for me a repair like this is about two billion trite so it, it really quickly becomes economically uh, unfeasible for a high ops player to use a g5 ship to kind of try and hit these 39 players because overall they don't have enough resources to kind of make make it worth our while for the uh, compared to the repairs so anyway you see that the crews have changed here and um quick note is that I would have changed this uh, order, the crewing order, uh, because I at the time I did not know that Tilly only procced in round one like a Harrison. So if I'd known that, I would put Tilly onto the D4. 
and then I would put Yuki down on the on the jelly, and then I would put Lorca down on the Enterprise. Just kind of give more mitigation, more time for Yuki to work, um, basically because the first two ships are throwaway ships, um, and they're you know one and done deals anyway. So um, that and that's basically how I would have reordered, and that's kind of the power of hindsight, I guess. Let's take a look at the crews real quick. You see right here, you've got Pike and Harrison and Morale on the first ship. We've got the Lorca Hull Breach Combat Nation on the D4. The Ents got the Shield Burn with Vixis, which is, you know, kind of a chin for PvP. On the Jelly, we've got Tilly and Saru and Burnham. So again, Shield Burn, negative damage, a little bit of Shield Burn from Burnham. And then on the Augur, we've got the TOS Uhara crew, uh, Parents Critical Hit Damage, and we've got Cross, who has minus 40% to all stats of the opponent's bridge officers. So it helps a little bit. So, you know, with that, let's take a quick look at the battle log. So here you can see that the officers are proccing, uh, Harrison is proccing, and remember, because of Pike and Morale, uh, Maru, it, it's going to be 100% shield ignore. And then you see Tilly is going to proc here as well. Uh, only, one, only one time, I guess, for, for round one. And you can see that... Uh, I scrolled over it too fast. So Tilly's, yeah, here's Tilly proccing. So negative 30% to, to shield health, like a Harrison. So right off the bat, 45% of my shield, shield health is gone. And you can see I'm hitting, unfortunately for him, TOS Ruha does not proc in round one. I'm doing critical hits. I still don't destroy the Saladin in two hits. It gets destroyed right here. And you can see that, you know, with him destroyed even, the zero shield health damage being done. Okay, so Harrison's still working for everything in round one, even with it, with him being destroyed. All that damage is being done to the the hull health instead, uh, well, as outside of basic mitigation, basically. All right, so now we're looking at round two. You see Yuki is proccing. To us, we're higher procs in round two, which is fortunate. I'm not doing a lot of uh, critical hit damage against the D4. And you can see that I, I killed the D4 in round two, um, but, you know, this was better than, than the previous uh, battle log where I actually killed both the D4 and the Enterprise in round two. So the D4 actually managed to last all the way until uh, my big gun's firing, which is great from a, from a, you know, from a delaying standpoint and letting his gun do more damage to my ship. So round three, I think the Enterprise is going to be up in round three. Uh, Uhara's procking again, so I'm not doing critical hits. And the Enterprise survives. I think it survives, yeah. It survives round three. So now it's round four. And you can see round four right here. Uh, at the beginning of the round, my shield is depleted. So uh, now all the damage that I'm going to take is going to go directly over to, to my hull, which is awful. Um, and the Enterprise gets destroyed in this round. So now I'm going to be fighting the Jelly. And does the Jelly survive? Let's take a look. No, it gets destroyed by the big guns, but again, it's still okay because it soaked up all the big gun damage. And now in round five, I'm hitting the auger. Uh, again, since auger has TOS or O'Hara on it, it, does, it did proc and prevent my critical hits. And it's right round five, so round six is when the auger gets destroyed. Um, and, you know, after this, it's going to be just defense platform A and the, and, and the rest, and it's going to go pretty quickly. So defense platform A um, actually gets destroyed when my big gun hits, and then, you know, in one one round-ish, the rest of it's going to go. Um, and, you know, that's basically it, but still, Yoda did really well in this fight. So in terms of what's possible, you know, on screen, I've got a screenshot from Lusenki. Again, thanks, Lou, thank you for, uh, for helping me out with this. But, you know, you know, at, at Ops 45, with basically just one G4 Uncommon, he defeated a Tier 5 Corvus um, with this type of crew. And you can kind of see, you know, he's got five ships only in dock as well. Um, and that's really impressive because an 80 million power ship being destroyed by um, uh, just having one G4 Uncommon, you know, unless you have the right crew, unless you know the kind of the the ship hit order, things like this doesn't really happen. So um, this is kind of what's possible. And moving forward, I will probably look at expanding upon this series and, and doing uh, a look at, you know, what's possible with, let's say, four docks and what's possible with six docks and things like that. So again, that's kind of it for today's video. Thank you guys for tuning in. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit the, the subscribe button. And if you have any comments, feel free to leave them below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.